I'm Andy Johnson from Avril Creek Vineyards. Uh, this is my passion, and I own Avril Creek Vineyards, and I'm the everything here. <laughs> the wine maker, the cheap bottle washer. Cleaning the floors, pruning the vines, making the wine. Wendy's the salesperson. <laughs> and she's also videographing today, Absolutely. too. <laughs> but I also, I also actually Twitter. I'm learning a new skill. Yay! Wow! We have Facebook buddies oh, now, yeah. what do you think? Yes, absolutely. Okay, there you go. <laughs> We're not going to be Twittering about this. It's probably as soon as we get back into that car, Suzanne Perfect. will be going crazy on her iPhone oh, doing right. a Twitter. <laughs> yeah. I know that we were asking people, you know, for if they had any recommendations of, of some of the wineries that we asked we should come to. Uh, this winery was on everybody's list. Mm -hmm. So we thought, well, that's a must. We must come over. Oh, how, how long have you, um, how long has the winery been open? We, we found this location in 2001, um, planting 2002, mm -hmm. uh, opened, built the winery 2005, opened in the spring of 2006. Okay, so and your first vintage was what year? It was 2004, mm -hmm. we made 400 cases, uh, sold them in about six weeks in 2006. Um, since then we've been growing, our um, last season was 7,000 cases. Wow, that's a great uh, we're, growth. We are, we're mm -hmm. pretty much um, fully developed now. Uh, awesome. We've got 30 acres of vines. Um, some are 10 year old, some are 6 years old. So what do you make here exactly? What kind of, uh, what kind of wine? We do, um, we've got 6 basic varieties. We've got Pinot Noir, Pinot Gris, um, it's a little bit of Merlot. Uh, it's a bit of a tough, tough like Merlot. Mm -hmm. Gewurz Tremina. Um, Marichal Foch and a new hybrid called Foch Cabernet, oh. which is a, a, a crossbreed between Marichal Foch and Cabernet Sauvignon. Mm. It's a Valentin Black cross, and it's a brilliant, brilliant wine for this, this area. Wow, now have you had, have you had a couple of vintages of that one? Uh, we have, we put it into our Prevo, which is this wine. This has got, this has been christened the Couch and Claret. The Couch and Claret? <laughs> I'm sure there's a story behind that. <laughs> Mostly because it's it's a it's a Bordeaux style wine. Okay. But it's Marichal Foch, mm -hmm. Marichal Foch Cabernet, and Merlot. Okay. And, and the problem with Marichal Foch, wonderful fruity wine, but lacking a little bit of tannin. Uh huh. So you've got two choices: you can either use biotannins in your ferment, or you can blend it as they do in Bordeaux. Right. Yes. So yeah, often single varietals are somewhat unidimensional, which is a problem, particularly in like Cab Sauvignon. Mm -hmm. So as Marisha Fosh, it's somewhat unidimensional. So if you blend it, you get some lovely, lovely flavors. Mm -hmm. And we've been developing this, this blend now. Uh, 2009 will be our third year. The 2008 won silver medal at All Canadian. Oh, awesome. Uh, awesome. And it was very well received at the uh, Playhouse Festival this week. Uh -huh. um, it, uh, a lot of people really enjoy it. What is it about winemaking that you love? Besides drinking it, of course. I have no, no idea. <laughs> I was brought up on a farm and I am a farmer. Mm -hmm. First and foremost, I'm a farmer. My mandate is 100% estate. Uh -huh, right. And, and I, I resent deeply people who sell Vancouver Island wine that's not made from Vancouver Island grapes. Yeah, someone else had mentioned that. That's yes. happened. Mm -hmm. And it's a real, a real problem for us because they've sold a lot of stuff that's not, not very good. Right. So they have you know, um, push down the, the um, value of the, of the Vancouver Island Appalachian mm -hmm. very much. Yes. And we've had to, uh, had to work hard to try to build that up again. Yes, I'm sure. But now, and, and what, what came out of this Playhouse Festival, which I thought was really, really nice, um, Vancouver Island is very different from the mm -hmm. It's It's like comparing Burgundy and Bordeaux. Right. Whereas the Okanagan is Canadian's Bordeaux and the yes. Bordeaux varieties, mm -hmm. and we're Canada's Burgundy with the Pinot Noir and the cool climate varieties. So we have something so similar in Ontario as well, in the uh, Prince Edward County, Prince Edward County, Niagara, 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 Niagara region. Same go. kind of thing. Yeah, yes. yeah. yeah. I mean, that really works. That really works. Yeah. So if you had to, if you had to pick, um, do you have a favorite grape that you think um, makes the, like the best wine, or you've had the best Pinot Noir? Pinot Noir. Pinot Noir. Best place in Canada for Pinot Noir. Really? It's right here? Absolutely right here. And where are we? Right here. We're looking beautiful. <laughs> you are the south slope of Mount Prevost in the Cowichan Valley. It is stunning. Cowichan is a Salish word meaning the warm land. The warm land. Oh, it's hot here in the summer, mm -hmm. but it doesn't rain. 
So this is like the, so don't bring your umbrellas in the summer. No, you don't need them. <laughs> the point is the fact that it doesn't freeze here, mm -hmm. so we don't get winter kill. Yes. Poor old Prince Edward County. Right. It's, well, they, they have to bury people. their mines yes. there. Yeah, a lot of work. It's, we've had three nights of minus 10 weather here in 10 years. Wow. So no problem. No, that's no problem. nothing. Yeah. So I can get mature fruit. I can get 10-year-old plants that are giving me some quality grapes. Mm -hmm. So and that, that's not an issue for me. And the plants, they thought... Your, um, your, your take on organic um, viticulture and winemaking? Uh, I think anything that promotes the well-being, natural state of the vineyard is good. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think it's feasible economically to be truly organic yet. Yeah. Uh, there's nothing that can replace treated posts mm -hmm. that make any kind of financial sense. Right. Right. Um, you cannot manage uh, powdery mildew organically. Right. Okay. You cannot. Yeah. Period. Mm -hmm. um, you can use elemental sulfur, which is fine, it's allowed in organic vineyards, but the powder will become resistant to it fairly quickly. Mm -hmm. So you've got to keep changing the plant, right. which means you've got to use occasional sprays of systemics, no choice. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to be truly organic, you've got to be very small, you've got to be very labor intensive. Yes, um, yeah. And now, the, the biggest negative about organic, there is no price, price point um, in the market for organic wine. People are not prepared to pay extra bucks yeah. because it's organic. Right. They don't care. No, and that's true. That's very, very true. Yeah. No, that's awesome. Now, I was just commenting to Wendy this morning. Our pre vote from 2010 would qualify as an organic wine because it's less than 100 parts per million of sulfur in it. Uh huh. And that's one of their requirements. I think we've got like a minute and a half left, but I okay. wanted to ask you I've noticed that, first of all, this is an extraordinary room here. This is an amazing, amazing winery. Beautiful, beautiful view. And I like your backdrop here uh, on the bar. I'm sure, is there a little bit of a story? This is all this is like a fork <laughs> backdrop. What's well, going on here? The, the interior decorator who came up to, to do this, this tasting room came up with these wonderful cork uh, tiles, which I thought were beautiful. They are. <laughs> great. As long as we don't have any cork in the bottle, I don't have any cork in the bottle. <laughs> and on that note, thank you, Andy. Good luck with your winery.